Dear brothers and sisters, the Lord himself, he said, Fear not those who kill the body, but I tell you whom you should be afraid of. Fear the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in the Guiana of fire. That is God himself. These words, they sound uh, terrifying. Because uh, God, as we imagine in our fallen imagination, is uh, some uh, rosy, like a Santa Claus. He is always smiling and he is always giving you good things. And uh, because why? Because he loves you, right? Well, this is our emotional and uh, uh, corrupt uh, understanding of love. The love of the Lord is... Uh, it is different, it's the love, okay? And the love is he cares about salvation of your soul. And everything that impedes this salvation is hated by him. Okay? So, <clears throat> uh, today I want to say about something that is very important and uh, uh, about which we have so many misunderstandings inside the church and with the clergy and with the bishops okay there are two ideas which which uh, you know, which people have about human life the most okay basic thing and we don't get it because we're too worldly okay uh, so <clears throat> uh, the first idea is uh, common to most people, okay, most people have this idea coming from the Renaissance, of, from this uh, anthropocentric uh, worldview, okay, that uh, the human life is the highest value, okay, it's absolute value, so um, you have to protect it uh, by all means, and uh, there is nothing more important than human life, okay, uh, this. Um, and after uh, Holocaust and all these uh, terrible wars that we have, we even uh, have more appreciation of human life, okay? But in the practice, of course, this disregard. Uh, people believe it, but in reality we see that uh, it, this is not how the world lives, okay? Um, because people kill each other all the time, okay? And uh, economically destroy each other. Okay, and uh, okay, th this is another big, big issue. But uh, today I'm talking about conceptual things. Okay, so this understanding uh, within the church, people, uh, there, there are people who support this view, and uh, uh, this this view is uh, uh, is not biblical. Okay, uh, this view comes from. Uh, some merge of ancient Greek culture and uh, Christianity and uh, uh, and makes human life the absolute value. That's why we have the human rights, human freedoms, okay, uh, all this democracy, which is all fake. Okay, all these things, people talk about it, but it's all fake. It's just uh, used to manipulate others. But at least uh, conceptually, these things are um, approved, they are ex accepted, and there are people, okay, those who fight for human rights, and uh, okay, th th there can be a dictatorship based on this, okay, uh, like dictatorship, dictatorship of the uh, those who believe that ecology that the, the, is the most highest thing, okay, the environment. And uh, then we, we can destroy econ economy and destroy everything for the environment. Well, it's it's another way. It's a postmodernism, okay? But modernism is more centered on uh, on uh, human uh, human life and uh, later progress and uh, technological progress and other things. I don't want to get into this today. Today I want to indicate. Uh, the problem with this worldview, this uh, idea about uh, human life, and the opposite, the opposite, which says that no, 
it's not uh, the absolute value and there are many other things that are more important. Okay, I'll talk about that in a moment because the truth is neither here nor there. Okay, the truth as the Lord tells us. Uh, why we can say this? Okay, we can see that uh, uh, beginning from the Old Testament, human life was never the highest value in the Bible. Okay, and uh, it's even more difficult to understand uh, why the Lord is destroying sinners. Okay, three thousand people died uh, after uh, worshiping that uh, uh, golden calf. Why don't not give them? opportunity to repent why destroy them why that person who who, who um, helped to hold the casket of covenant uh, not to fall down why he, he, he fell dead okay the, by the Lord's punishment um, oh, okay uh, why uh, the Pharaoh died all his army died why the Lord blessed all those wars that uh, uh, that the Israelites were fighting with all the nations who occupied uh, the uh, Palestine, uh, the Promised Land. Why so much blood, so much destruction? And it's all blessed by, by the Lord. So it, it uh, creates many problems for, uh, for us to explain how, how the, this was possible in the Old Testament, but it's not possible anymore in the New Testament time. Uh, but the conclusion we can get from those examples and from what the Lord said Himself, the conclusion is that uh, there are absolute values that are higher than human life. And uh, for the Lord it's more important the salvation of human soul than his life, his physical life. This is why he says, don't be afraid of those who kill your body. Be afraid of him who can destroy both your body and soul in the Gehenna of fire. And when they come uh, and tell him about um, uh, those um, 18 people who, who died, okay, this Tower of Silo um, uh, fell, killed all of them, <clears throat> and uh, he didn't say, guys, I will pray for them. I'm so sorry to hear the, this bad news. L let us pray for them. Let us help their families. Let us um, okay, uh, do something about it. I'm so sorry. I will pray for their soul. And no, he didn't say anything of that. He said, if you don't repent, all of you are going to die in the same way. Very strict. No compassion. No compassion for those guys. Uh, so this is um, this is a big alarm to us. Okay, that our repentance matters more to the Lord than our life, our health, our economic well-being, anything that we have. Our repentance and our life with the Lord, or in sin and against Him, against His will. This is much more important for the Lord than anything else. Okay. Um, another opposite idea okay, of this. The opposite idea says that um, it's more fundamentalist. Okay? Uh, and we have uh, fundamentalists uh, even uh, within the church. And these fundamentalists, fundamentalists they, they say, no, they point out to all those wars and uh, fire that came to Sodoma and Gomorrah, and they say, no, uh, the, the human life uh, is very uh, relative. It, it, it doesn't matter much to the Lord. There are big pro projects that uh, the Lord has to accomplish, and um, those projects are much more important than human life. And you, need, you can sacrifice. And uh, if, uh, for example, we are fighting for an Orthodox country, of course, we need to go and die and without thinking. Because we protect the Orthodox country. Okay? 
we are against Sodom and Gomorrah, so we can destroy the, everybody who is uh, uh, who has the values of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if in the process there there are other hundreds of thousands of people who die, well, be it so. It's all in Lord's hands. They die, well, the Lord allow them to die, so we don't care. We just go and do it. This is uh, fascist and uh, um, even satanist mindset. It's called uh, Satano Dicea. It's a justification of death, which is um, terrible, especially when people uh, in the church have it. And we had one uh, uh, one um, <clears throat> speaker who said, uh, "Well, see those revolutions in Russia. We just need the big uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, cannons and put it here and there, and we just kill all of them, and then will be no revolution. Everything would be fine with Russia." So, so he had this idea that we we can just use force, power, just destroy everybody who is against us and just fix the problem. Um, well, this uh, mindset is much more dangerous even than the liberal one. This mindset uh, uh, is um, based on false understanding. Um, th this is, um, of course, people who want a religious sanction to go and kill, they, they like it. Of course, they, they, they receive this news and this, oh, the church tells us, the Bible tells us, okay, let's go and, and do it. So, <clears throat> uh, and the Lord his, himself, he said that the, the times are coming when people are going to be killing you, thinking that they are serving God. And now we have these times, big time. Uh, what is the problem? There are many problems, of course, with this kind of thinking. Uh, well, first, the Lord created uh, humans, every one of us, gave us life. Uh, and He is uh, happy to just to see that we are alive, that, that we do something. He is happy about this. As you would be happy to see your child play in the in the backyard or somewhere, no matter what he is doing, you are happy just to see him there. And this is the joy the Lord has, even much more when he can see us just live and do things. However, if the child is uh, behaving badly, if he is uh, um, sinning, making other people suffer, uh, always disobeying his uh, father and uh, even scolding his father and, uh, and doing all kinds of abomination, the attitude uh, will be changing. The, the parent would be uh, tolerating this for some time, maybe uh, uh, finding a way to, to do something about it, talking to him. But if uh, the thing is getting worse, he's going to fix it. He's going to find a way to fix it. Okay? So the Lord, uh, in the same way, if you can see that uh, someone becomes uh, okay, it becomes uh, uh, okay. He, he is bringing uh, evil and destruction and suffering and uh, all the other stuff. He will find a way to fix this. He will maybe he will not destroy. Maybe he makes him uh, incapable, or he will do something about it. Okay, we we don't know. It's uh, the Lord, Lord's judgment. Okay, we don't help him to judge. Okay, he will do the judgment and execute it. Okay, <clears throat> uh, but in the Psalms he said, "Those who are uh, the killers and uh, who are deceivers, 
they will not live half their, uh, their days. They will die soon. Most of the time they die, die young. Uh, and uh, uh, even if they don't, okay, some crooks, uh, they, they, they live to 200 years and more. Well, this is exception. I think uh, the Lord has some special plan for them. Okay? There is some use in their existence. Okay? So, <clears throat> uh, we don't do judgments. Okay? But we know that uh, life of someone who is evil and disseminating evil to others, disseminating uh, lies and uh, um, bringing people to suffer and uh, um, also live sinful life and uh, go to uh, uh, and destroy their soul, okay? <clears throat> then he will uh, he will not tolerate it too much, too long, okay? He is long suffering. We say the Lord is long suffering, but it's not un unlimited, okay? There will be an end to this. So, um, and in the Psalms there is a um, there is a uh, uh, there, there is a saying you see a sinner out there after a while you look at that place you won't you don't find him he's gone already because because that's how the things are, are happening uh, so <clears throat> now politicians and the church people they like to use the gospel and the Bible to justify their uh, political agenda to justify uh, something else, okay, um, uh, wars and 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 other things, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we can go back to times of the war. At that time, there was uh, war against the uh, Roman Empire. Okay, <laughs> it, it conquered Palestine, Israel, Judea. And uh, there were people who were not satisfied, and they wanted to return this land back, uh, because it's the—it's not just their homeland, which is now occupied by a foreign invader, but this is uh, uh, their um, land given to them by God Himself. So by uh, chasing out these invaders, they will be accomplishing the plan of the Lord to give this land to the people of Israel. This is even much more holy thing. But what was attitude of the Lord? He neither supported this, nor he was against it, openly speaking against it, against this movement, this zealot movement. He was distancing himself from this, and he he cared about those children of Israel who can repent and uh, come to the knowledge of the truth and uh, reach salvation, follow him and reach salvation. This is what he was caring about. So, uh, what do we see in today's church? different uh, uh, priests and bishops and when there are some uh, uh, political things and conflicts they take sides and they find some justification even from the Bible to say yes yes you need to do this you need to go and fight and kill and whatever why protect you need to sacrifice yourselves for others and uh, and many other things okay but it's completely different from what the Lord himself, his attitude in that kind of situation. And no matter what you take, you say, okay, it's uh, uh, Ukraine being invaded by Russia. Or you can say it's um, Russia being uh, uh, pushed by the West or by some globalists. Uh, I don't know, Sodomites or someone else, okay? No matter what, what is the paradigm you... you, you, you you have in your hand the political political paradigm that you have it's still um, it doesn't find support in the life of jesus christ in his preaching to support either side and to justify any kind of uh, 
uh, war to, to go on, to, to happen. But this is not what we see. So there is this attachment to this world, the interests. Okay, who has power? Who has uh, what? And calling people Christians to go and kill. So this is uh, really telling us that many people are hacked. Their mind is hacked. Their brain, their heart is hacked. And uh, uh, and they make wrong decisions and take um, okay <clears throat> and do wrong things and call people. Uh, well, if you're blind, you'll bring uh, other people also to the pit of destruction. Yourself, you'll fall into it and you'll bring others into that pit. So <clears throat> we should be uh, very careful in what we hear even from church people, from uh, spiritual leaders, and uh, to always uh, look at the Gospel, Holy Fathers, what did they say? Okay. And uh, we, we can also conclude that whenever there is any earthly interest, oh, this is orthodox, uh, this orthodox country, so th these are limits we have to protect, this is homeland, okay, yes, there is a responsibility, there is a, your duty to the homeland, yes, and there is your duty to God. And sometimes there may be a conflict between these two duties, okay? And uh, even uh, when we talk about the duty to the homeland, it's your duty to go and protect your country and uh, and uh, and and die for it. Uh, the Israelites, they fought for their homeland, for sure. They fought for the promised land, which was given to them by God. But in case of some secular country that we have, the government that tells you to uh, go and die for it for this country. Is it really representing the interest of this country and these people? That's a big question. Because now uh, you don't really know who is behind this country, this uh, government, and what their agenda is. They tell you that this is, but do we believe the news and all this, uh, the stuff that we, we were told? I think uh, we cannot be so naive modern times, modern politics and the way the world runs, it's not the same as 2000 years ago, even 100 years ago. So when we had these imperialistic wars, like First World War, who knows, what are we fighting for? Okay, those people in those different countries, they were just fighting non-stop. Who knew who, who, uh, who, who they fought for, their country? or some imperialist uh, agenda, or I don't know, new world order, what, what are they fighting for? Something similar is happening now, even worse. So uh, <clears throat> you go, you think you're dying for your own country, but you die for something else that you're not told about, okay? And even if it would be for your own country and your own, own, own people, you don't find support in the gospel. You don't. Yes, it's, uh, it may be your duty uh, as a citizen, but don't use the gospel to justify it. Okay? So uh, this is uh, something I wanted to share with uh, all, of, all of you. And uh, I think we need to be wise. We need to be uh, uh, digging into the word of God. Okay? Not just listening to some people interpreting it uh, in their way to justify some <coughs> some agenda, some political interests. No, we, we need to know the word and how the Holy Church, the Holy Church through the Holy Fathers, is telling us the meaning of the Holy Word that can bring us to salvation. And we need to be in repentance. Without this, our life loses its meaning completely. It doesn't have value in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, so let us live righteous life and uh, <clears throat> seek the kingdom of heaven and its truth every day, all the time. I mean, God bless.